Everyone is ar listening right now, and they're arguing, and they're going mentally. They're going, I don't know if everybody does. Work with me. I just want you to, these are some statistics. I want you, if you're listening right now, I want you to verify them tonight. I want you to assume that I don't know what I'm talking about, and then I'm going to do this thing to combat it called the law of credibility, which means that everything I state needs to be a fact. So I'm stating things that are facts, and you can verify. So according to Forbes, go ahead and Google search. If you just think about it now. What percentage of the jobs in our country were created by small businesses? So think about it right now. You're listening to these presidential candidates who are like, what I'm going to do is I'm going to totally transform the economy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the world. I'm going to create 4 million jobs. And, you know, some of them have never created any jobs. But the thing is, is that you have these candidates having their discussions and you go, well, where are the jobs really created? According to Forbes, 65% of the jobs are created by small business owners. Yeah. That's you. And if it's not you, you work for one. And if it's not, if you don't work for us, maybe say you work. I work in a major corporation. It's huge. You don't understand. It's huge. <laughs> work with me. Then, according to Forbes, 57% of you listening want to start That's right. or, or grow your own business. See, why, do, why does 57% of the planet in your mind want to start their own business at some point? Because we've done a great job in this country of implanting that DNA. There's no social classes here like old European standards yep. of, well, my father was a carpenter, so I'm going to be a carpenter. My father was a Thatcher, so therefore I'm a Thatcher. I can't rise the social ladder or the economic ladder. And I'm and, and now I'm in Russia and uh, yeah. and I'm a communist. We all yeah. share the same right. thing. I mean, this country's done a great job of putting that DNA in everybody's brain of this. You can do it. You can create your own future. You are in control of your destiny. You know, so many great, I love success stories, and so many great success stories are something like immigrant, he lands on our shore, doesn't have $100 in his pocket, you know, and next thing you know, he owns 357 Pizza Huts. Yeah. You know, you're kind of going, wow, how did that happen? I want to tell you, there's a uh, client that, that I have coached for years, and it's been fun uh, watching this client grow and grow and grow, and a guy that I do some consulting with right now, I help his business, he's an ORU, uh, Oral Roberts University student. He went to Victory Christian Center. He grew up with a, a wonderful mom. She went back and got her degree, you know, got her doctorate while she was being a single mom, raising the guy. Um, his, his, his wife, he's, he just got married. His wife just had a baby actually this morning. I got the little oh, text wow. message. Wow. His name is Jonathan Barnett, and he is the founder of OxyFresh Carpet Cleaning. This is a Victory Christian student raised without really a dad in his life. His mom, single mom, raised him. He started a business called OxyFresh. Now, Z, how do you think he got started in the carpet cleaning business? You're listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. He could have been a real messy kid and was always like spilling things on the carpet. <laughs> I'm gonna and and, so and he was like, you know, it. it was like, oh my gosh, I gotta clean this carpet before mom gets home. Otherwise, I'm gonna be in time out. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you the story because this is a Tulsa's Tulsa's only local business radio show. I'm giving this Tulsa story. So Jonathan Barnett goes out there, and by the way, he was dating the lady who is now my wife. Wow. So when they broke up for a little moment, that little time, I just seized in there. Boom. So carpe, carpi. There you go. <laughs> so you seized the carpet. <laughs> yeah. So, right. uh, so what happened is well, he ends up, he goes out there and he um, starts a firework stand because that's the, all the money he had was enough money to start a firework stand in Sepulpa. So he's promoting that. He hired a DJ at our company, DJ Connection, back in the day to come out there and DJ. It was his way to differentiate. Did you know it was your company? He did because we, we was a deal where the relationship was kind of patched up at that point. Mm. You okay, know? that's nice. It was, it was far enough where they weren't dating that it was, I guess, okay. not too soon. For you to chicken hawk. But it was still <laughs> not cool. And going back on it, I'm really glad that I broke that ethical boundary to make that happen. But the thing <laughs> yeah, is, yeah. is it so anyway. So <laughs> your five kids, by the way. Yeah, so anyway. <laughs> So uh, the thing was, uh, he, he hired a DJ as a way to differentiate his, his firework stand. And he realized, man, my firework stand is making a ton of money simply because I sell the same fireworks as everybody else, but I have a DJ in front. It really creates a buzz. Yeah, that's cool. So then he takes the money and he goes, I'm saving money, so I want to do something else. He's not sure what to do. So he's just thinking about business ideas, and he thinks about a business that's renewable. What's something that always people always need to do year after year, week after week? Carpet cleaning. I was going to say pay their taxes, but yeah, yeah right. that's <laughs> yeah, pay your taxes. So the thing is, uh, he decided, you know what? I don't know a lot about the industry, but I like the idea. So I'm going to go work for a carpet cleaning business. Ah, oh, the move. So he got in the game, the move. got educated. Then he went back to college to get his MBA and kind of sharpen his skills. Next thing you know, he calls me and says, "Hey, I've started this business, Oxyfresh. 
Uh, we've got a few franchises. I'd like to hire you to help m train my team how to sell. We have a sales school. We do it at Thrive15.com, which is world class. I mean, it's very specific, linear. Um, I've trained with Maytag, Hewlett Packard, O'Reilly's Auto Parts. I mean, we have a system that's proven it works. Uh, where do you find that again? Thrive15.com. T-H-R-I-V-E-1-5, that? Yes, it's com. the world's that best one. business online training school. But we also do in-person workshops. Now, I have it up from a good source that Forbes actually... Has, well, Forbes has named us as being one of the top resources for entrepreneurs to learn. Wow. And so that's a big thing. John now has almost 300. I mean, there's over 300 separate franchise owners now. It's just taken off. It's grown. And as the business has grown, guess what's happened? He has realized, oh, my gosh, I have to manage people. Uh Oh, this just in. And so he's become a master of these moves by necessity just to mm -hmm. make it. Now, principle number three, and I guarantee you he would agree with this, is that principle number three is confront unsavory politics directly. Yep. Face reality as it is, not as it was or as you wish it to be. Who said that? Jack oh, Welch. He's one of my favorites. Mine I too. love Jack Welch. Yeah. Jack Welch grew GE by 4,000%. Uh, I want to hug him. Can I hug him, Jack? If you're out there, and I want to hug you. Beat Greg Norman in golf. Did he really? Yeah. And he's beat Greg Norman. Yeah, I didn't for real. Know that. Uh, wow, I didn't know that. that later, Fun yeah. factoid. Yeah. I didn't think he could get any cooler, but he just yeah, I know, me and too. And he says, face reality as it is, not as it was or as you wish it to be. Jeff, when you're talking about principle three, confronting unsavory polit politics directly, right. why do you have to come directly and not kind of sidestep it or kind of work around well, it? Or it kinda... It's the only way to confront it. The problem is, is that people are afraid of it. They're afraid of conflict and mm. that sort of thing. And you cannot do that. You cannot make it personal. Look, competition is real. We live in a world where we compete for food and water and houses and mating privileges and the whole thing. And so it's mating not privileges. Yeah. It sounds like you've done well. well. I competed and won in that and, one. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Survival oh. drive extraordinaire. Chicken, chicker, Again. chicken, chicken, dinner. So, so the idea that we have to uh, be competitive uh, and that people are going to be competitive with us is something that we have to accept and understand that we have to, if we want to live in America, we've got to be competitive and we're going to have people who want to compete with us. Even people who might work for us might want to eventually compete with us. You have to understand, however, that they have to do it right. And like Dr. Z said, he has a heart as an entrepreneur to want to help people thrive. And so if you have an understanding that, like I'm a counselor and I hope the other counselors in town are doing a good job. Right? right. I'm doing exactly, a good yeah. job and I think I'm going to be the best one in town. But still, the idea that somebody else is doing a great job, that I'm going to go out and try to knock off all the other counselors because I'm paranoid. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm not going to do that. So you have to con you can't take it personally. You have to confront somebody directly. And it's not about a personal thing. Somebody's it's listening. Somebody's listening here. And I want to say this because you're saying it's not a personal thing. Right. But they're listening and they are north of 40. Right. They're like maybe even 50. They might even as old as 60. Right. And they've got some millennials. So this is what's happened. The boss mm -hmm. is going, oh, back in the day when I was there, and we would show up on time. Yeah. We went on the Facebook. We went texting. Yeah. And the millennials going, bro, why are you so upset, bro? Yeah. Yeah. You know, can we share a car, boss? Can we share a car? Let's ride to work together, bro. And I want to talk about that generational gap a little okay. bit, Jeff, when we get back. All right. Because you've been doing counseling for a long time, yeah. but you're not the millennials. It's a little different strategy, a little bit. I want to hear your feedback on how to do that. See, well, you got to be straight up with them. You got to be straight up. Like Paul you got to be. You got to be straight up. That's right. And when we come back, we're going to unpack that and make it easy for you to be straight up with them. That music knowledge is vast. <laughs> Broadcasting from the center of the universe, featuring optometrist turned entrepreneur, Dr. Robert Zellner, and U.S. SBA Entrepreneur of the Year, Clay Clark. This is the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. Hello, Thrive Nation and Oklahomies. Welcome back to the show that you need to know. This is the show you want to just turn that dial and marinate on this for a while. This is the kind of radio program where you're, 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 you're feeding your, your heart, you're feeding your head, you're learning these things. And I will tell you this, the more you know, the more your wallet will grow, if you apply it. So Thomas Edison, my main man, Thomas Edison, he invented the light bulb. Yeah. He, well, he might, might have stolen it from Mr. Tesla. But the thing is, <laughs> he invented the light bulb. He invented recorded video, recorded audio. He says this. He says, vision without execution. I repeat, vision without execution execution someone should write that down vision without execution is hallucination 
So if you're listening right now and you've always been dreaming of wanting to start a business, I want to start a business. I want, and they go, Greg, pay attention. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was just, I was just uh, filing my, uh, and then you, you know, they walk into your office and, Greg, what are you looking at? And you're like, I just, I was on Inc. Magazine to figure out how to help the business grow. And you're, you're just, you admit it now, admit it. You want to start a business. This is your show. It's your show. We are here for you. We are here for you. Drive time, 5 to 7, Monday through Friday, AM 1170 Talk Radio. We, And you know, the thing I like about this? What's that? Is that I love it. I do too. That's what I like about it is I love it. I love mentoring people. I love saying, hey, listen, here's how we screwed up. Here's how we did it right. Here's yep. some practical steps. Oh, by the way, here's a funny story. Laugh at this. You've got a stuff squirrel on your desk. Watch on Facebook Live. I mean, you know, it's just the moves. These things we're teaching. I'm just going to give you an example. We have a thriver I talked to who is a cosmetic surgeon uh, in the city. In the city. Sales are up for her 40% year over year. I know that because I was sent their search engine report, wow. talked to the person they didn't know search engine last year. They know search engine now, and they all they learned it all at Thrive15.com. Now their money is long. Their income is very lo- long. They're making lots of money, and you guess what? Their work days are short because they learned these kinds of things, how to manage their staff. But what are they going to do with all that money, Clay? <laughs> well, they're probably yeah, they got to spend it or do something. Yeah, I'm fine. They should probably just burn it. Yeah. So I feel guilty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're talking about the six principle, the principles of managing relationships at work while still getting work done. And we're here today with a licensed professional counselor we brought in the big guns the big gun we brought in the big voice the big voice and the big gun he's got a beautiful voice a voice a voice made for radio and a face made for tv yeah oh, absolutely yeah, you've got to watch facebook live this is a this is an attractive man it's kind of a george clooney <laughs> oh come on he don't Pitt. believe him guys they're he's, He's given a new <laughs> lease on life to the people, the listeners. I'm going to spell it out for you. It's Jeff Rent, R-I-N-D-T. Jeff, where can people find out more about you? JeffRent.com. And how do you spell that again? One more time. J-E-F-F-R-I-N-D-T.com. So the thing is, you got to have six principles for managing relationships at work while you still get stuff done. See, a lot of entrepreneurs, you're running around wondering how everyone's feeling, but you're not making any money. Yeah. Someone else, you're focused on money. Right. And you can't hire, you can't keep employees there at all. No right. one will no one will work with you. No one will work with you. And this number three, you know, the confront unsavory politics directly yeah. is something that is probably because you're sitting out there, you're driving home. It's Friday. You're going. It's Friday. Friday. Well, I'm going to tailgate. My big team's on this weekend. Boom, 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 boom. You're having a great time. You got us cranked up, and you're waving people as you're going by. I'm, I'm thriving. I'm thriving. You know. <laughs> uh, but here's the deal. Here's the deal. Everybody. Everybody loves. The good times. The good times. Yep. But it's the bad times that test you right. as an owner of a business. That's right. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm going to give I'm going to give a hard, hard, cold fact. Hard, cold fact. Stone cold, hard fact. Mm, I'm just going to have to take this now. You're hard. driving. Don't don't steer into a ditch. Mm. Yeah, don't do it. You might want to pull over to the truck stop all of a sudden. Get, just kind of take it easy. Take a deep a good breath. One with a shower. You want to shower off. This is a factoid. Okay, here we go. Sometimes you get to be the good cop. And sometimes you have to be the bad cop. Yep. And here's the deal. Someone's listening right now. To, we talked I don't want to be the bad we cop. We talked about it before the break. Somebody's listening right now, and you are trying to manage dun, 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 millennials. Yep. Someone says, I don't understand why that matters. It'll work with me. I will tell you that is the single biggest question that I get asked when I speak at management events. Yeah. I just spoke for a big event for Chevron. 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 The ga- Chevron. Oil and gas. Yes. Big oil. They, they say, though. How do you manage millennials? So I, I throw it to you. Uh, back to you, Jeff. With, with, with principle three, confronting the yep. unsavory politics, how do you handle it differently, differently with millennials versus you know, baby boomers? Right. How do you, what, what's the difference? Well, the big difference is that younger people are, uh, have been affected by technology in ways that have changed their personality. Like if you look at empathy and measure, the, the uh, average number of people in college that have a an empathy score it's 37 percent lower than it used to be so em- em- lower empathy score yeah what does that now, mean well that means that they don't understand how other people are thinking that mm. they're into technology they're into what they see on the screen but they're not associating with people they're texting instead of connecting you know so but but i will say <clears throat> they did know what they had for breakfast that morning 
You're listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. So kids today have a little, have less empathy. Yeah, but I don't look at that as a bad thing. They still, uh, they're uh, technology. Your website, for example, with technology is a perfect example of what young people will tie into. I love that. But they still are going to have to increase their brain power, just like everybody else. They're still going to have to have strength of will. Mm. They're going to have to have emotional balance if they want to become uh, successful in their job. A lot of times, it's not about what you do, but who you are. Okay. And they need to focus on that. So if you're listening right now and you say, what do I do with this knowledge? What I want you to do right now is I want you to make a list mm-hmm. of a burning fire. It's not, it's not a burning like it's a big, big f- 